How is it possible to suspend topaz in one cup of the balance and weigh it against amethyst in the other? Or who in a single language can compare the tranquilizing grace of a maiden with the invigorating pleasure of witnessing a well-contested rat fight? Um, what? 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 <laughs> Topaz is a rather fascinating gemstone with a quite muddled history. Today we're going to talk about the traditional November birthstone, Topaz. It's long overdue, but this is the 12th in my History of Birthstone series, so let's dive right on in. The name Topaz has two likely and perhaps tangential origins. It could be from the Sanskrit, meaning inner fire, or named as implied by Pliny the Elder for the Isle of Topazios. However, if you'll recall the episode on Peridot, no topaz was mined on Topazios. Until the birth of modern mineralogy, any number of yellowish to yellow-green gemstones could have been considered topaz at one point or another. It's rather muddled. So what is topaz according to mineralogy today? Topaz is an aluminum and fluorine bearing silicate mineral with a rating of an 8 on the Mohs scale of hardness, which makes it great for jewelry very scratch resistant. Topaz can form in a wide variety of colors, though in its purest state, the crystals are clear. Due to the confusing nature of the mineralogy of topaz, it's actually been confused for other minerals as well. For instance, in Brazil in 1740, the quote, largest diamond ever found, at least until that point, may have been a topaz. This was known as the Braganza diamond. Now, just like the history of topaz, there is conflicting information about the Braganza, and its locality is in question today. One of the most interesting parts about Topaz is that it can form in truly massive crystals. For instance, the world's largest faceted Topaz is called the Eldorado Topaz. It's this gorgeous golden-colored Topaz that is some 31,000 carats. So, you know, a few pounds. But here's the really exciting part. It was cut from an 81-pound crystal. Just absolutely mind-blowing. Now... This is where the fun begins. Naturally, in most cases, the topaz colors we see come from atomic-level structural damage known as a color center. The short explanation is that usually due to radiation, an atom in the atomic structure reached a high-energy state and was knocked out of the chemical chain. An electron then filled that void to maintain neutrality. This phenomenon is also why topaz and many other minerals can be UV sensitive or fade with prolonged exposure to sunlight. Light is energy, and with enough energy, the misaligned atom can reach an excited state and return to its original position. This fixes the color center, and I know that was an awful lot, so what is actually happening here? Everything that we see absorbs and reflects light differently. Say you have a red shirt. Technically, the red shirt is every color but red. All other wavelengths of light are being absorbed by the shirt, but red is the only one being reflected back to your eyes. A color center, this atomic level structural defect, is changing how light is absorbed and reflected, creating color. Now there are a wide variety of topaz color treatments and enhancements on the market today, and the conversation about color centers leads us into the most popular, radiation. Blue is one of the most popular topaz colors. However, naturally, it's typically very, mm, to use what the children are saying today, demure and pale. But with targeted radiation, the color centers that create blue topaz can be intensified. They can even take clear topaz and make it blue. The next popular treatment is the aura treatment. This is creating an iridescent effect artificially. Topaz is a pioneer in this as mystic topaz has been prevalent on the market for far longer than a lot of the other aura minerals like aqua aura or angel aura quartz. All of these though are made by putting the stone in a pressurized container with heavy metal vapors and heating to many many hundreds of degrees. Centigrade. This makes the thin metal vapors stick to the exterior of the stone and oxidize, creating an iridescence. 
Natural or not, I find Mystic Topaz facets to be quite pretty. I know, you're probably wondering where the Topaz history is. This is a History of Topaz video after all. I'll discuss that momentarily, but first... If you haven't yet, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It tremendously helps the channel and helps me pay for my editor, which, uh... It's me. It's a one-man show. And if you do want to take it a step further, check the description or the pinned comment. There are more ways that you can help the channel out there as well. Let's get back to the program. There are many references to Topaz before the mid-1800s when it became mineralogically classified. The writings of Pliny the Elder, the King James Bible, and more. Much like ruby with red gemstones, before geologists discovered the topaz formed in more colors than yellow, a lot of yellow to green gems were called topaz. A lot of ancient depictions could be references to topaz or minerals like heliodor or chrysoberyl. So keeping that in mind, let's look at some of the beliefs surrounding topaz. You may notice that, just like everything else in my History of Birthstone series, these have likewise transmigrated to today from previous beliefs. Both Hindus and shamans in Africa treated the topaz as sacred. Hindus believed that the topaz would grant wisdom and long life, and the African shamans used it in healing rituals. During the Renaissance in Europe, people believed that topaz could break spells and quell anger. It's ironic. Another interesting tradition is that the ancient Egyptians believed that the Egyptian topaz got its golden color from the glow of the sun god Ra. They also believed that it had the ability to make its owner invisible. The ancient Romans believed that topaz would change color when danger was near. The blade glows blue when orcs are close and had the ability to protect the owner against harmful poisons. This is a particularly fun one because it lets me talk about pleochroism. Pleochroism is a property of certain minerals and crystals that causes them to appear different colors when viewed from different directions. This is especially common with certain types of topaz, specifically the red to pink varieties. Look at this Anastasia topaz here. You see bits of yellow and orange when you look at it from different little angles. Super cool. Now, there were two main events that happened around the 1800s classification. The first is the discovery of a pinkish to orange variety of topaz in Russia's Ural Mountains. This was named Imperial Topaz to honor the Russian Tsar, and at the time, only royalty was allowed to own it. Around the same time, large deposits of topaz were found in Brazil, and brought topaz prices down to more affordable levels. You know, for the average person, at least. Imperial topaz can still be pretty pricey, but overall topaz is one of the most affordable gemstones on the market today. And like most other gemstones in the series, topaz has tremendous industrial applications. It's used as refractory materials for kilns and furnaces, a flux in steel making, and an abrasive material. It's a raw material in some ceramics and some glass. Finally, where can you find topaz? Topaz is mined all over the world, but if you are in the United States, the two most popular collecting localities are in Utah and Texas. The Utah locality is called Topaz Mountain, and its summit is in the Thomas Range of Utah, which is east of the Thomas Caldera. The summit and surrounding area are known for their abundance of semi-precious minerals, including topaz, red barrel, and opal. Topaz is a mineral with a admittedly somewhat confusing history behind it, but I hope you've learned something today. And if you liked what you heard, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you didn't like what you heard, well, thanks for listening this long. I hope you have a wonderful day, and stay shiny, my friends.